This video is going to talk about how to mesh a conjugate heat transfer problem using the ANSYS meshing tools, in particular the workbench environment, which you can see is shown right here at the beginning of this video. This environment uh, contains all of the meshing tools that you would use along with other things if you wanted to bring it in there. To begin this process, you would drag a meshing tool into the environment which has already been done, and this provides two of the steps necessary to mesh an object, the geometry step and the meshing step. So the geometry tool, we'll look at that one first. This is where you're going to prepare the geometry for the meshing process, and that uses a tool called Space Claim. This is Space Claim, and this is all of the geometry of the object that we're going to mesh, and this is a conjugate heat transfer problem, like I said before, but it's uh, basically a duct one foot by one foot that blows air over the top of a series of electrically heated rods. These would be like heating elements, like you might have in your oven. They heat the air as it passes over. So, and this geometry has been decomposed so that it can be meshed using the sweeping techniques. Uh, and also so that we can have smaller length scale mesh around the tubes because they're, of course, smaller and then allow the mesh to transition to longer length scales. So those are all the different bodies there. So it's been decomposed already. Uh, and so the other thing that needs to be set up within here is the assignment of groupings of bodies and, and the various entities so that you can put boundary conditions on it. And the first thing that's been set here has been identified is the inlet. So this is where the air would be coming in. So this is a, basically a one foot by one foot duct. And this would be the inlet. We have the outlet where the air would come out. Uh, and then we have the fluid. These are, there are six bodies you can see right here, which all encompass all of the space that the air would be in. And then the second set of bodies here, there are 12 bodies, and these are all the bodies of the 12 heating elements that are going to be used, and those will be represented as solids that will be heated. Uh, and then the surfaces of the heating elements are wall elements. As, and then the final thing that is characterized in this CAD model are the outer surfaces of the duct. So these are the things that need to be put together within the geometry manipulation tool to characterize all of the geometry so that the meshing process will go well. So now we're ready to move on to the meshing process. So now that we've completed the preparation of the geometry, the next thing we need to do is mesh the bodies. Here we would right click on the meshing object right here and then start the meshing tool. This has already been done, so we'll just bring it up here. And this is what the meshing tool looks like. And this provides tools for meshing each of the objects that have been pulled in here. And this is kind of a tree of the things that kind of need to be set up in the meshing process. The geometry is kind of automatically pulled in. The workbench and environment does that for you. Uh, and various other things. I think the most important thing to kind of focus on here uh, so we can kind of do this rapidly is just kind of review some of the settings that has been set up. So for the meshing stage, we want to make sure that we select the physics to be CFD and the solver for fluent. Uh, and then we want to set the sizing. We're going to set some dis default sizing. We're going to choose, you know, you can kind of look and see the settings that we have there. Uh, and then we need to set some properties about how each one of these objects are going to be meshed. Uh, in particular, the body sizing is one thing that we're going to set first. And like we said in the, uh, the geometry prep area, we want to have a smaller link scale around these heating elements. And so we're setting the body sizing. You can see that we chose a much smaller link scale right there. Uh, and then we're also going to choose a sweeping method here uh, using what's called a multi-zone technique is chosen for that method. And we also assigned a inflation layer here. And the inflation layer has been set for growth off of each one of the surfaces. There are 24 faces here. Those are all of the surfaces 
of the rod. So we want an inflation layer there. And then the last thing that we're going to assign is this thing called a patch conforming method. And that's basically a tetrahedral mesh to grow kind of three dimensionally from a smaller length scale to a longer length scale. You'll notice also that some of the things that the name selections that were in the geometry are also shown here. We have the inlet, outlet, the fluid zones. Those are all set up here. And then the final mesh topology, you would kind of right click and mesh these. You would mesh these objects first, and then you would mesh these larger bodies right here. And then the final mesh um, would be the tetrahedral meshes that you would do. That would be the kind of the order that you would want to mesh this in. And this is kind of what the mesh looks like. You could kind of see how the boundary layer with this O style grid around the solid bodies to capture the heat transfer there. Then the internals of these solid objects, these where the heating elements are, those are going to be solids and those are also meshed. And then you have this smaller length scale kind of transitions to the longer length scale, which is the overall length scale that we want to have within our whole duct. So that is the mesh that we want. So the next thing we need to do is export this mesh. So we would go over to file, export mesh. We're going to export a fluent mesh and we would click eggs export and then we're going to export I'm going to put it in this ANSYS tutorial mesh and I'm going to call it um, duct um, example and we'll say save. And so what happens here is it exports the mesh. So now the mesh has been exported and we're ready to read it in to the CFD application, which is the next step of our process. We are going to use Azor today. So we'll bring up the Azor application and we will import the mesh that was written out by going file, import, and we put it in the ANSYS tutorial and we called it duct example. So we say open. And so basically this is being read in and converted to the form that can be used for the CFD simulation. You can kind of see it's writing out various things that the conversion process does and it converts it into what is necessary. The conversion process is complete and we can rotate it around and look at it. <coughs> we can see here our uh, heating elements are in here. And now we need to set up the boundary conditions. And we've already run a previous simulation to kind of speed this tutorial along. We're going to access that previous simulation and import in the database settings from that previous one to help us. So we're going to select the database, and that's in our ANSYS tutorial. And here it is. We're going to say select. And so now this has pulled in all of the settings that were previously set up there. So kind of speed the process along, uh, streamline setting up the model the next time. And so we'll just kind of take all the default settings and say yes. And so now all of the settings have been set up within our model. And we can kind of go and take a look at them. If we go over to our database, the equations we're going to use the standard K epsilon model. The energy equation is turned on. We go over here and look at our boundary conditions. Um, so we'll look here at our inlet. Uh, we have, uh, we're just going to have a nominal velocity of one meter per second coming in. Uh, basically a hydraulic diameter of about a foot uh, with an in turbulent intensity about 5%. And we'll have the air coming in at 300 degrees. Uh, and the outlet is set to a zero pressure with a uh, backflow where we don't expect any to be there, but we'll have our backflow setting there. So that sets up those things. But the other thing that also needs to be set up uh, is our volumetric boundary conditions, since this is a conjugate heat transfer problem. And we have these solid, so we have our fluid elements, but we also have our solid elements. And this is where we're going to add energy. And you can see right here, the energy sources have been turned on for these objects and a constant heat flux of about a thousand has been, put, you know, maybe more than a thousand, 10,000. So, <clears throat> So now those are, and each one of those have been set here. And the other thing that has been set in here are the material properties. We have steel set in here for the solids and we have the 
thermal conductivity set, the specific heat is here, the thermal conductivity and its density, all of those have also been set and read in. So everything has been set up. So the next thing we need to do is start the simulation. We go over here and we say file. Uh, we need to save the database before we can start the simulation. We'll call it duct example. Here's our database and we'll say save. You can see the progress down here on the right. So this is writing out the database. The database is a series of folders. Uh, they hold various information about what's necessary to run the CFD simulation. As soon as that is done, then we will start the simulation and begin to watch it. So we'll go file, start run. And we're gonna, it's, this is a pretty big model. Uh, let's just, before that, let's just look and see how big this model is. Let's just get a little info down here. So this is, you know, it's about three, almost four million cells. So it's a fair size model. So we're gonna start the model. Uh, we're gonna run it in a single precision and this, this computer has eight cores in it. So we're gonna run it in parallel on eight and we'll set it to 8,000 iterations. And start the run. So now it has launched the uh, Azor solver in the background and it is waiting. So the GUI and the solver are kind of two separate programs and they talk to one another as it's running. And so the solver is beginning its setup process and then it automatically connects to the GUI because we asked it to. So then we can go over here and say display monitors and we can look at the residuals as it's running. And so we've already run four iterations. So this is gonna run a while. So we're gonna go ahead and say, well, I'm gonna go on and do some other things. So I'm gonna exit out of my application right here. The solver itself will continue running in the background and then we will connect to it later. Okay, our simulation has been running for a while now and we wanna check and see what it's been doing. So we bring up our Azor application again and we say file. Open, we'll just open it basic and we traverse back over to that uh, folder and we open it and we say select. And it says, hey, actually, you know, the simulation's running. You wanna connect to it? And we say, yes, let's go ahead and connect to it. <clears throat> and so it's connected to the solver and it's run 5,000 iterations now. And let's see how it's doing. We go to monitor residuals. Ah. Looks like it's doing fine. It's, I think it's pretty much done. So let's stop it and see what the results look like. So now we have asked the solver to stop and we're waiting for it to connect and let the solver process itself stop it. And it stopped. And now that it's done, it's saying, okay, hey, do you want to load the results and take a look at it? And you say, yes, we would like to look at the results. So we say yes. So now it is loading in the simulation results and we can take a look at it. Uh, we say, yes, I'm gonna restore some previous defaults. And previously we had looked at some, some simulations and this is a cutting plane through the center of the duct. And you can see, and we're looking at the temperature of the air. And you can see the air is coming in at around the 300 degree uh, value that we gave it. And then uh, it is heating up and you can see yeah, there's a, a recirculation zone. So let's, actually, let's go over and look at the velocity profile just for a moment on that surface. You can see as it goes around here, you have a high velocity over here and a low velocity over there. Maybe we want to kind of take a look at the velocity vectors on that surface. So let's just do that. We can kind of look in here and look at those velocity vectors. You can see where the flow, there's a recirculation zone. And so that kind of indicates or explains why so we have some heated gases down below that array right there. So we go back and let's just take another quick look at the contours of the temperature again. And you can see where you can see it's hot 
So our heating elements have been heating up the air as it passes through there. So the simulation is now complete. We could look at a number of different things, but that kind of, in a nutshell, shows how we could run a conjugate heat transfer problem. We build the mesh in ANSYS meshing, and then we pull it in, we run the simulation, we let it run in the background, and then we open it up after it's run for a while and look at the results.